Hi, I'm Tony Bowen and welcome to my Corn Country Rails. Well, it has finally happened. After about a year long debate, I'm starting to signal my railroad. Last year, I was very fortunate when I went to the N-Scale convention in Chicago to talk to John at Azatrax about their product. And I've had a chance to talk to Richard at Custom Signal Systems about their signals. And why did it take so long? Well, there was a couple reasons. One, money. I'm gonna be quite honest. To signal your railroad, it takes some money. It's not one of those things that you can just enter into and then say, eh, I don't want to. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. And so I'm in the mindset of, here's my budget. Every month, I'm ordering a pair of signals and I'm ordering myself the Aztrac circuit board to go with it. Now. I have two decks on my layout. I have what will be encompassed about 20 signal heads and 10 controllers to work them. And so that's a lot of money. But I finally broke it down into these kind of terms. It'd be like buying one Kato engine a month for 10 months. And so essentially it's like, okay, so when you're breaking it down, I'm spending somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, hundred dollars yeah that's about what it's gonna be that every set of signals by the time you look at the signals and you look at the circuitry that's under it is gonna be about a hundred dollars okay so as I said it's not a cheap investment to get into so what are some reasons it took me also some long well one it was also the availability and scale signals are not as available as they once were NJ International makes a great signal, but it would take me a lifetime to get 20 of them that I'd want for my railroad, and I knew that just wasn't gonna be possible. BLMA made a great signal, but as soon as Atlas bought them out, whoosh, those signals are gone. Every once in a while, they're up on eBay, but there's no guarantee you'll get them. You could get outbid by somebody else. So that wasn't set for me. So I decided to go with custom signal systems. One, they're readily available, and they're all handmade. And so I'm figuring each month, I'm gonna say, this is what I need, and then in a couple weeks, here they are at my doorstep. So that works for me. One of the other things with the Azatrax that I liked when I talked to John last year at the N-Scale convention is his product of how you can kind of daisy chain all of them together. And once they're all together, the signal goes to red, well, as soon as the train gets to the next set of signals, it's gonna to go to the yellow aspect. As soon as it gets to the third, it's gonna to go to the green, and I really like that. And so right now, only having one set, I don't get that. Train goes by, it does its seven to 14 seconds, and it goes from red to the yellow to then another 14 to seven seconds to the green. And that's okay for now, but I think once it's integrated with other signals, that's when it's gonna get fun. And so John makes a great product, comes with very explicit detailed directions. The other thing, and I got reading about this the other day in one of my books that I like from Tony Coaster, and it's all on signaling and aspects and that, but I knew one of the first couple sentences, I was like, yes, this is me. It says, signals serve a dual purpose on railroads. They help manage the movement of trains and enhance the safety. Well, that's true. I want my operators, when they're running the railroad, they'll know if they have a green, they can go. Model railroaders, though, have also discovered this third benefit, and this is the one I fell into. Model railroaders discovered the third benefit, that they just look cool, and that yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it looks pretty cool when a train goes by and we see it drop from green to a red, okay? Now, some other things to help me out in my quest to start signaling my railroad is I made this little tin plate tool. And you might look at that and go, is this a religious kind of thing? No, it's not, okay? And essentially, it's a tool for me to use as I signal my whole railroad that I can lay this center part in the tracks like this but then I also have a tin plate on each side so I'll know every time I get ready to put in a set of signals, 
I have my little pilot holes of where my east and west signals will go. So they're always the same distance away from. So it's kind of developing a standard that I'm going to have for my signaling system. The other thing is, when I talked to John, he said, from where your signals are, you want to have the sensors anywhere from about a 40 to 50 scale feet from the signal. Well, I just have it so when I put this at the very edge or very center where the signal is, this is about 40 scale feet. If I go to the other side, it does the same thing. So where my signals are, I have my sensors on either side, equal distance. And so you'll see that also in this video. So keep in mind, this is only one way for installing signals. I know there are a bunch out there. This is just how I'm choosing to signal my railroad. Now, my railroad will not be CTC. My railroad is gonna be ABS. It's also gonna have some virtual blocks. Like when it comes out of this area, it's a virtual block. So this signal here will always give kind of a false indication. Now I can change that false indication with overriding it with a push button so that it's red, but essentially it might give a green indication until that train gets into that block. Okay, the other reason I have some other virtual blocks is in my staging area. I may have a train that comes out of staging and all of a sudden now it starts hitting blocks. That could be a problem. And same as I could have a train that is hitting all the blocks and goes into staging and doesn't hit that next block. Well, if the signal behind that train is red, it may always stay red until it senses another train that hits the block beyond that. And so I gave it some real thought of areas that I can run and have regular blocks, like on the open part of the layout, but some areas where it goes into the hidden area where it's gonna be more of virtual blocks. And I guess that will also keep my dispatcher on his or her toes so they know where trains are at all times. So I hope you enjoy this video on my first signal installation. And I hope to, as I finish the lower deck, which if by buying signals once a month, if I keep on track, no pun intended, if I keep on track, I should have the lower deck all completed signaling wise by September. Then I will move to the upper deck. That probably won't be totally completed until February of 2021, okay? so. But I hope to do kind of a midway follow-up of how the signals do work together when I get multiple signal heads all hooked up. So I hope you enjoy this and please remember you can leave your comments, your questions below, and if I can't answer them, I would encourage you to reach out to John at Azatrax or Richard at Custom Signal Systems because I have asked both of these gentlemen several questions before I kind of dove into the signaling world and they have both been extremely helpful. So kudos to those guys. So anyway, enjoy. So these yellow push bins have been around on my layout for probably about the last year and a half. And essentially they were just little markers for me to look at and say, is this where I would maybe want to have a pair of signals at someday. Nice thing was with them being push pins, I could pull them up, move them around wherever I needed. Um, kind of a nice trial run before I actually start putting any kind of signals in. So last year when I was at the N-Scale convention, I got the chance to talk to John from Azatrax. Asked him several questions about his product and just kind of made sure how these would work on my layout. Everything came nicely packaged with the uh, infrared um, sensors for eastbound, westbound, uh, your circuit board, you get extra resistors if you need them, and then just your mounting screws for the, um, for the circuit board. I also needed to get a uh, power supply, and John also sells that. He has both a 9 volt and a 12 volt and I decided I went with the 12 volt. He also includes all of his directions which you can also print off PDFs of from his website prior to ordering his product.
So as I said at the beginning of the video, I made this small tin plate tool to help me out. Essentially, it lays in between the rails and has pilot holes for the east and westbound um, signals. That way, wherever I place them on my layout, they're always the same distance away from the main line. I can also work off the ends of the um, tin plate as to where the infrared sensors need to be placed on either side of where the signals will be placed. And so it's a pretty useful tool in signal installation. So using my tin plate, I located where the holes would be for the signals, started with a small pilot drill bit, and then moved to a 3 16 drill bit. Cleaned out the holes and ran a straw down through them. The straw is going to be very important for when I'm feeding the very fine wires of the signals down through them. And so I can also trim off the straws to the height I need. The other nice thing is I could push up from the straws from the bottom of the layout to adjust the height of the signals if I didn't seem to think they were equal heights and trying to have them pretty much the same. Once I had the holes located where the signals would go, I slid my tin plate to the west and worked off the end of that to locate where the westbound sensors would be. Drilling two 3 16 holes and basically kind of pointed at a 45 degree angle of each other because I'm using the reflective method where the receiver and the sender kind of bounce off a message from the bottom of the car. Once the westbound infrared detectors were in, I slid my tin plate to the east and essentially repeated the same process. I had to move just a little bit further to the east because I had a grade crossing right there, but drilled in two holes, 3 16 at that 45 degree angle so that they could um, send a reflective message um, to one another when a train goes by. And one other thing I have to say, the little plastic tubing that comes with these are so handy when it comes to feeding the wires down through that hole that you make for the um, infrared. So great thinking on, on as a track part. So at this stage, the straws in the center, basically representing where the east and westbound signals will be, are in place. To the west, both infrared sensors are in. To the east, both infrared sensors are in. And so essentially there's the dangling of wires coming from the sensors and so it's time to basically hook it up to the Aztrac circuit board and, and see what happens. So at this time, I hooked up power to the Aztrac's board. So the brown and white wires at the very top are just the power coming in. And if you notice to the left of the board, it's kind of split and makes it very easy to know that half of that board is working the eastbound um, infrared the other half of that board is working the westbound part of that board. What you'll notice at the very bottom is you'll get a little yellow light indication when you put your hand over the westbound sensor, and you'll get a little red LED um, notification or, or light when you're putting your hand over the sensors of the eastbound. So pretty much letting you know that, hey, the circuit board is ready to go. The right side of the board, we can already see where it says signals, and that is going to be here again, split up just like the right side of the board for what will control that eastbound signal and what will control that westbound signal. So the circuit board is very well laid out, nothing confusing about it, very straightforward. So at this point, everything with the Azatrac circuit board is pretty much completed. The only thing I have left is hooking up the signals to it. So, as I said, I got my signals from Custom Signal Systems. They come very well packaged. The wires, um, being the magnetic wires, come very well labeled as to the red, yellow, green, and common. And so, essentially, I needed to solder on some heavier leads that would go into the Azatrax. So, using my little kind of clamp 
I clamped the signal in one of them and then would put my heavier uh, gauge 24 uh, telephone wire in them and essentially wrap them, solder them, and then just put a little heat shrink on them and they were ready essentially then to get fed through the straws and hooked up to the um, Azatrax board. I will say this is a very important step to don't rush, take your time, um, especially when it comes to feeding those wires down through that straw of maybe only taking like one at a time because with that heat shrink on there, you can't just pull them all down. And so if I got one started like the yellow and then maybe brought down the red and then the common and then the green, there was still enough of a wire lead that they would all come right through that straw and then uh, kind of dangle underneath the layout. And then of course, once they were all out, I just bundled them with some temporary tape that just put eastbound signals because I also still had wires hanging down from the infrared leads and I didn't want to get them all tangled up um, when it came time to kind of tucking and cleaning up all the wiring. So at this point, it was taking the eastbound signal, taking the wire leads, and hooking them right into the Azatrax board. And depending on what type of signal you have, the directions tell you exactly where to go and how to hook them up. So mine was pretty straightforward. Green went to green, yellow went to yellow, red went to red, and then where the common was to go. So very easy and voila, as soon as it was hooked up and I plugged it in, you have power. Now, when you turn these on, it will not sense a train right away and that. So all signals will, by default, go to yellow until one passes. So of course the signal has to be tried out with an eastbound train. So as it goes by, it goes from the green clear aspect down to a restrictive red. If the block is occupied. Now to get this fully functioning to its full potential is going to be great when I have three signals hooked up because then they will react to one another. So when one train is in one block and goes to the next signal, it will essentially change the aspect of the signal behind it. So with just having a single uh, signal right now, uh, when the train passes it, it's going to go to red. As soon as the caboose rolls by, it'll stay red for a short amount of time, which you can change some of the settings. I'm just leaving it at the default right now until I get more signals um, hooked up. So it's still staying red. There it's now switched to proceed with it being a yellow and it'll stay yellow for a while and then obviously a clear with a green. This is where you get a false indication. The signal was green but we have a train coming from the west and essentially it should have been red and so it doesn't change red until the train is picked up by the infrared. This is because the train essentially was in a virtual block. There are no signals beyond this signal and so it cannot really detect anything that is there. Now you can override that with a shunt or some push switches, but in this case, I'm just going to treat it as this is where the end of my ABS is. And so hopefully my dispatcher will be doing their job and we'll know if anything is coming and not get that false indication. So as soon as the caboose rolls by, we're gonna see that go from a red to a green aspect. And there we see that. So just like I did with the other signal, I took the westbound signal, extended some wire leads on it, ran them through the straw, labeled them westbound, and then essentially put the signal in place. This was a great time now having both signals mounted on those straws that I could kind of push up from the bottom of the layout to make sure that their alignment was just right, um, that the poles were straight up and down, um, if they had any kind of twist because if the wires were fed down and the signal didn't want to like be pointed right towards the track and that, 
that I can make those final adjustments. What I did to hold the signals in place is I just took on the edge of that straw and just took some regular white Elmer's glue and held them in place there until they dried. And that seemed to work real well. After the signals had a chance to dry, I came back with my scenery materials to put ballast around the base of the straw, if any of that was exposed, and to also bring it up to the base of the signal. And then just used my um, scenery cement of water glue mix and let it set overnight. And that basically holds the signals in place. Thank you for watching my signal installation using the uh, custom signal systems and the Azatrax uh, TS2. Um, very easy to use. Um, I was a little intimidated about entering into the signal field. And after doing this one, um, I feel very comfortable continuing on and adding additional signals on my layout. I do plan to do a follow-up video that will come out once I have the whole bottom deck of my layout um, signaled and kind of talk about how the signals work together when, when I'll have you know five pairs or, or ten signal heads um, hooked up. So be looking for that and um, I wish you well and thank you for watching.